He drags Carter in motion toward the ball. He spins in the backfield. Off the play fake. Rolls to his right on the bootleg. Throws in the end zone. Down toward the end zone. Tipped up. It is juggled. Rob Pate comes up with the interception. He's back to the five. Broke a tackle and stumbled out to the ten-yard line. Pate won the jump ball. He threw into double coverage down around the goal line. And it went uh, tipped up in the air to Antonio Carter. And Pate came down with a loose ball. Auburn has created an early turnover. Well, Rob Pate, we said he was a lot more like his old self last week when he made that outstanding interception against Georgia. This time he just times his jump. The ball is actually batted by Stanford Simmons, intended for Antonio Carter. And Stanford Simmons, as he batted the ball, Rob Pate kept his eye on it, made that interception. All right, here is Ben Leard out with the Auburn offense. The slot is to the right side with two wide outs and one to the left, and he's changing his play. Fullback Keith Evans ahead of Rudy Johnson. Here's a give to Rudy Johnson. Running to the left. He's got some running room. Five, ten yards and a first down. Out across the 20 to the 21, close to the 22, as he rolled off that left side and found some daylight. Rudy Johnson on duty in Tuscaloosa. Third down, about 20 to go. Three wides to the right, one to the left. The ball at the left hash mark. Single setback is Heath Evans, and Leard is going to back away from the line of scrimmage and run from the shotgun. The play clock running down. He's got the snap. He fires over the middle. Pass is caught. Tight end catches it close to a first down. Got it at the 45-yard line. Lorenzo Diamond coming over the middle. Lorenzo Diamond, and he's got his first down. A gain of right at 20 yards. They needed 19 and a half, and Auburn is back in business. First down and 10 at its 45-yard line, and Leard threw a strike that time. What a big pass by Ben Leard to Lorenzo Diamond, who just ran a seam route straight up the pipe, and Leard found him in front of the safeties, and that was uh, Lorenzo Diamond's 10th catch on the year. He's got one touchdown, but that was a really big one uh, for the uh, big tight end out of Luxy. Sal back there by himself in the shotgun on third down and about eight. Low snap. He picks it up. He's looking to throw. They're after him. Chased out of the pocket. Somebody yanks him down from behind. It was Whit Smith who did a great job. Reached out and grabbed his uniform and otherwise he would have probably had uh, enough running room for a first down and more. But Whit Smith did great work. Grabbed him with his right hand by his uniform jersey and pulled him down from behind short of the 10 yard line. Heath Evans the lone setback. Three wide receivers to the right. Lear changing his play. Going to step back four or five yards in the shotgun. Play clock at eight. Lear waiting, getting the snap. He looks, going to give it to Evans. Got some running room. Evans to the 40. Evans open field, 35-30, 25-20. He's at the 15. He's at the 10, and they drop him at the nine-yard line. Beautifully done. The give to Heath Evans. And the big fullback rambled before Victor Ellis brought him down 34 yards down the field. Jim, that may be the first draw play that's been run to Heath Evans. Alabama certainly unaware that Heath was going to be a potential weapon on that play. They saw Ben Leard in the shotgun. He was changing the play at the line of scrimmage. All the Alabama players thought it was going to be a pass. Third and five. Boy, he dropped it to Heath Evans. They hit it just right all the way down inside the Alabama 10. Pets go to hold. The kick by Duvall is away. It is good. And Auburn draws first blood as the first quarter comes to an end. That's the end of the first quarter of play as Auburn is up three to nothing on homestanding Alabama here in Tuscaloosa. Pulling away from center, Ben Leard going to throw over the middle. D.D. Green running room, 45-50. He's at the 45. He's to the Bama 40-yard line. First and 10 Tigers. Tony Dixon on the tackle as they caught him napping that time. D.D. Green was split away to the short side of the field, the near left side. He went across the middle, and Ben Leard spotted him wide open, and he rambled for 17 yards in a first and 10. Crowd making noise here in Tuscaloosa. Auburn third and a yard. I said in the backfield, toss sweep Rudy, rolls to his right, looking to get outside, bounces off one man. He's got the first down as he spins inside the 30 and drives to the 29-yard line. It's going to be a 42-yard effort with 54 seconds to go in the half. Slippery conditions, a lot of rain. They spot it, put it down. The kick is away. High, long, and good. The second field goal of the game by Damon Duvall to extend the Auburn lead to 6 to nothing. Ben Leard under center. Waiting for the snap, single setback, Rudy Johnson hands it off to Rudy, breaks off the right side, breaking tackles, slips through one, he's at the 15, he's at the 10, he drives onto the 5 and maybe the 4-yard line. Rudy Johnson could not pull away 
from the last man who had a shot at him, Darius Gilbert. But Auburn has a first and goal at the Bama four after an 18-yard burst by Rudy Johnson. Rudy is on duty. Well, Auburn, the offensive lineman, Cole Kubelik, very excited. Hart McGarry, very excited on that play. Good job by Mike Pasilla, Colin Sears on that right side. Rudy Johnson just doing what he does, shredding tacklers, and uh, that's why he's the nation's fifth leading rusher, averaging over 139 yards a game. And Freddie Millen's calling the play. Millen slips away from one man, rolling out to the right. He's in a lot of trouble, and they're going to drop him way back on the 22-yard uh, line as Larry Casher headed the pursuit. Well, Millen's came in and took the snap at quarterback and tried to catch Auburn napping, but the Tiger defense stood tough, and he is dropped for a big loss all the way back to the 22, a six-yard loss, and it's fourth down and eight to go. Well, you had to take a gulp that time when you saw him change directions because Freddie Millen scored on a play similar to that against Florida in the SEC championship game where he was MVP, but Auburn's defense just reacted in a superb fashion on that play. Sal's in the shotgun. Blocking for him will be Myrie. Zao back to throw, looking for some help. He's in trouble, and he's going down. They sack him back near midfield, McNeil and Mills. They were on him like Velcro all the way back to the 49-yard line. Evans is the lone setback. In the, uh, in the uh, shotgun is leered. He's looking to throw. Down the middle, pass is caught by the open receiver, 45 to the Bama, to the 50 to the Bama, 49, maybe the 48-yard uh, line, Lorenzo Diamond. Leard pulls away. Play fake, sets up, throwing long for D.D. Green. He's got it inside the 10, and he's down at the 5-yard line, out of bounds along the near side. Bailey and Dixon had him double teamed, but D.D. Green went up and came down with the football. Good for 31 yards, and another first and goal for Auburn. Well, just a huge play called at the right time because Kelf Bailey is the only one back there on D.D. Green. D.D. Green, ball was underthrown, may have been underthrown purposefully because they wanted to get in a jump ball situation with Kelf Bailey and D.D. Green. D.D. Green 6-2, Kelf Bailey at 5-11, and D.D. Green's got that ability, just that unusual ability to go up and get the football. 27 the yards from the 17. Angle back to the right. They'll put it on the far hash mark. Duval kicks it away out of the hole to Fesco. And that one is up and good. The third field goal of the afternoon by Damon Duval gives Auburn a 9 to nothing lead with 9.18 to play here in Tuscaloosa. Cleared again with a single setback. Rudy Johnson, he's going to give it to Johnson, running to the near side, looking for a block. He's got one. He broke a tackle. He's at the 40. He's at 45. He's all the way out to midfield and driven out of bounds along the near sideline. Again, Evans alone setback. Second and about four. Evans gets the call at right tackle. Heath keeping his feet. He stumbles inside the 40, drives ahead to the 35-yard line. Victor Ellis had to finally haul him in as he slipped between a couple of tacklers and really barreled into the 35. What a run by Heath Evans. That's probably the best run we've seen Heath make in a long time other than that draw play, which was the only draw that Auburn's run to him earlier in the first half that set up all, one of the Auburn's field goals. But uh, Heath Evans uh, averaging close to five yards per carry just does not carry the ball that often. High formation in the backfield. Evans ahead of Johnson. Give to Johnson on the pitch. Turns the corner. Johnson looking for the first down. He's got it inside the 25 and dragging tacklers with him to about the 24, maybe the 23. Rudy Johnson. Johnson on fire in Tuscaloosa. We're inside of five minutes, and Auburn's got a first down at the Bama 24. Sal has five wide receivers. He's got the snap and the shotgun. They're after him. They hit him behind the line. Down he goes back at the 45. Sacked by who else? DeMarco McNeil, number 92. Third and 10. Here is Andrew Zhao, double wing set. Arvin Richard to block for him back there. Zhao taking the snap, looking, looking, throwing out in this near sideline, and Richard juggles it, can't hang on, incomplete. At the 25-yard line, he took a jolt from Rodney Creighton as he was juggling the ball. It's down to fourth and 10 with a minute 12 to go. All right, they'll kneel at the 30. This is uh, Neil Thomas spotting it at actually about the 38-yard line. There's a snap, spot to kick. It's going to be way short and no good. And that should do it. With a minute five to go, the Auburn Tigers only have to set on the football. Rejoice, Auburn, rejoice! 
You know, Auburn's going to get out of here with a win over Alabama. Second down snap for Leard with 29 seconds to go. He's got it. He genuflects. Hey, that'll do it. We're going to get out of here with a victory, Charlie. Break out the cigars. Auburn has defeated Alabama. We've still got 17 seconds to play, but there are handshakes all around. The celebration has begun. We're down to eight seconds at Tuscaloosa. Auburn's going to win this game. Auburn's going to win the SEC title in the West Division. The Tigers have defeated Alabama 9 to nothing. See you later, Bama. I'm headed to Toomer's Corner. War Eagle, everybody. Auburn, on the strength of three Damon Duvall field goals, has defeated Alabama at Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. Auburn is the SEC West Division champion, and they just made the announcement on the PA here at Tuscaloosa. It is Auburn with a record of nine wins and two losses, and just as importantly, if not more so, a record of 3-0 and here in Tuscaloosa. They've come in here and defeated Alabama. This one is over, and the celebrating is underway for the first time since 1901. Auburn has come to Tuscaloosa and defeated arch-rival Alabama. And I'm telling you, those fans down in the north end zone, those Auburn folks are going hog wild. They didn't leave that scoreboard on very long, I'll tell you that. It's turned off. Hey, it's cold, it's wet, it's miserable, but it is so wonderful. In Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Auburn has defeated the Crimson Tide. War Eagle, everybody! You came to play, and you came to play for four quarters. That's the reason we won that football game. Yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's one guy in here we need to take our hat off to. I'm going to tell you what, last two weeks, he's been the, the major difference in us being here. Duval. Damon Duval. Yeah. Defense, that's about as good as ever you'll ever see. Give yourself a hand. Yeah. Offensively, we got the job done. You know, you could tell that everybody keep coming together the whole game. There was never any doubt. Everybody just kept kept coming together. I'm proud of you. All the coaches are proud of you. Those 20,000 people out there are proud of you. You guys have come a long way. Unfortunately, you got yourself into another week. Them rings we, how about them rings we're going to get on our backs? Yeah. One thing we're going to do for a few days is we're going we're to live on this victory because I'm going to tell you something. It's been 100 years, and at the beginning of the year, not one person, not one person outside of this room gave you a dog chance to be where you're at. I'm talking about not anybody. You've accomplished something that nobody maybe in history has ever done come from so far down to come so far up and it's because you're a team we're not overly talented in a lot of areas but we got more heart than probably most of the teams put together i want to thank you from the bottom of my heart i love every one of you be careful going home be careful going home remember what i always tell you be careful going home live on this one if you want to, you can go back out there and holler at them folks. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go as a family. This, this game, this game we won tonight, was for Auburn University. Right. This is for Auburn. Man. We were the only ones that thought we could be here. And this one right here goes to the leader. Just like we talked about the other night, the person we followed. Coach Tubbs, your second year SEC West champion head coach.
Like he said, the last two weeks, he's been our MVP. <laughs> Big D, what for him? Duve, Duve! like anybody else you want to stop the running game and not give it the big play and, and we didn't do either of those things and and, and uh you know that's why we were successful it, it, it mean a lot to us because you know where i came in sc you know west champs where i'm going out this time we just had to win it man we everybody was saying on the sideline that uh, arkansas had beat mississippi state and you know that kind of fired everybody up you know we we knew we had to win the game now yeah close as i got to the goal line was when you all got the intercept, you tipped the ball, didn't you? Yeah, I, I batted it up, and uh, Pate stuck with me and uh, picked it off. Well, we had been looking at film all week, and we saw a lot of a lot of wrinkles in their defense, and we knew we could come out and execute all along. It's just a matter of time that we had to do it. Uh, it's, it's so beautiful. I, I, I can't explain how I feel right now. Well, explain how y'all shut them out. <laughs> we just swung to the ball. We just Everybody on defense gave 100% effort. I was just concentrating on getting the ball. I wasn't trying to make too much happen. Just uh, it was going to be a field position game, and just catching them, uh, just trying to win the field position battle. Um, you know they did a great job. Michael Lindsay on punts did a great job, and you know Jeremy Wells and Justin Fesco on field goals. You know he, balls out there wet, it's muddy. You know they did a great job handling it, and you know Justin did a great job hitting the spot even in the rain and being cold. You know, and you know I couldn't have done it without them. Going to Atlanta was. Uh, one of the seniors' goals this year, and to be able to accomplish that is, is really saying something for us. Uh, it really shows the character of these guys, and uh, and I'm, I'm just happy to play with these guys. You're a championship quarterback. Glad to be there. Uh, you know, it, 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 in times in my career, I haven't looked looked like that, but fortunately, you know, we've been able to fight through with the unity and the faith among this team. It's immeasurable, and uh, you know, we're just happy to be where we're at today. This man right here is the reason we nine and two. He's been the heart and soul of this offense. He's been the best leader we've ever had around here. A silent assassin, baby. A quiet killer. We're killing him all year.